It's, it's um, super hard, right? Like one of the things I've been realizing the last couple of years, something I don't talk a lot about is, I mention it, but I'm really starting to tap into it is, boy, do I leave a lot of money on the table, like every year, and like, you know, like a lot. And I'm like, and, and you just ask yourself why. Like, you, you know, why is important, and like it makes so much sense, it's just because I'm going for bigger, and better, and legacy, and more money. Like, it's all of it. So today's the day. Get excited, about to go down and eat some breakfast. And jump in the cab to head to VaynerMedia. Nothing. Cool, I'm Ricky Carruth. I'm from Orange Beach, Alabama. Um, I've been in real estate since 2002. What was your name? Ward Richmond. W Ward, yeah. I'm a lot like Ward in terms of I just started social media about a year ago. Um, I built my entire business on email and phone calls and uh, I totally focused on real estate for 15 years, did nothing else. Built a million dollar a year business, number one Remax agent in Alabama last year. And since then, I've decided I want to, I, I feel like I like accomplished that and, and, and beat real estate, you know, number one. And so now I kind of, I guess I kind of got bored. And now I wanted to explore just totally different things and challenge myself. And so over the past year, like I, I, like I started watching Gary about a year ago, right? About the same time I started social media and thought about writing a book and doing speeches and stuff. So over the past year has been a little crazy because you know, I hit number one during the same year. I write two books. I started a vlog, a podcast. I started Instagram, daily YouTube videos, you know, the whole nine yards. So I've done maybe 10 or 15 speeches uh, during that time. So I'm really, I'm starting to get a lot of momentum. Um, I started coaching. So a year ago, I started coaching realtors. And so my whole goal is I want to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. Um, I think too many agents are judging their business on how many appointments they get and I think it should be more about how many people you're talking to and out of those people how many you're connecting with long term. And so I teach agents how to communicate who they are as a person with how they're communicating with their clients as opposed to the cookie cutter scripts that are out there that really just make you feel like you're just, make your client feel like you're just going after a deal or just you want the listing you're trying to close something instead of actually trying to help them. And so that's kind of the path that I've, I've taken, but I started charging for my coaching. And over the past year I was charging, and then about a month ago I decided to go totally free, because what would happen is, is I would have 300 people sign up for a webinar. A hundred of them show up and one sign up. And so I'm losing 99 people, of people that really put forth the time and effort to learn something and wanted to get something out of it, but at the end they say, I knew it, he was going to try to charge me. And so now, for the past month, I went totally free. The 200 paying members, not a single one of them wanted any money back because of how much value I've given them uh, compared to how much they paid. And so that I, that's kind of the path I'm on. So my goal and what I'm here for is I want to build my personal brand in that real estate niche. And I literally, I, I know that I'm going to be the number one real estate speaker in the world over the next two, three, four, five years, um, I'm on that path. And so I'm here to really just take it, take every little piece uh, uh, that I can get out of this and just run with it. So I'm Ricky Crew from Orange Beach, Alabama. I'm also in real estate, Remax Orange Beach. Um, so I've been selling real estate for 16 years. In the past year, I started social media. Like I didn't do it before. Right. Like business on email. You're like, that's not going to sell shit for me, right? Is how you thought but, about it? Right. It's, it's the mindset. But uh, so, so I started speaking, coaching, and now do a vlog, a YouTube. What made you do that? Watching like, what, you. what, really? Just right, well, I had a passion for the fact that I value relationships over transactions and I have a, like, like my mission is to reduce the failure rate because yeah. I watch agents come in and out, yeah. in and out. And the problem is they, the, the cookie cutter system doesn't really 
the way that they, they teach you I to know. communicate I is it, it teaches them to go after the deal. And so what I'm Short doing term. is I'm I'm teaching agents how to communicate who they are as a person, like that they care about people with how they're you know, who they are with how they communicate with Which their is often clients. their truth and they're taught right. out of it. Right, right. And so they don't know any better. And so I'm trying to come it. in and go against the grain. Instead. It's super hard, right? Like one of the things I've been realizing the last couple of years, something I don't talk a lot about is, I mention it, but I'm really starting to tap into it is, boy, do I leave a lot of money on the table, like every year, and like, you know, like a lot. And I'm like, and, and you just ask yourself why. Like, you, you know, why is important? And like, it makes so much sense. It's just because I'm going for bigger and better and legacy and more money. Like, it's all of it. And it's super counterintuitive. It's just not, and especially if you're in sales. But it's but all the actions in the reverse. It's cool. Right, right. Awesome. So thanks to you, um, I'm gonna be I'm on the path to be the number one real estate speaker in the world through your your giving away the free content. Like that's what I was missing. And so now right. I was I was charging for coaching and I went free. And now I give away all those deepest secrets and content for nothing. And all of a sudden, miraculously, you make more money. Not Amazing less. things are happening. So <laughs> so fucking so, basic. <laughs> It's so, really fucking intense, man. It, it, By the way, it's completely evergreen. Even for like, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, spec work. Like, all, we don't, like, it's just crazy. Even this. Like, we have, we have agencies that we want, I, I don't know, you're, you're, I want your business. Like, I want a hotel client. Like, like we don't have one. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, but, you know, to me, I never get scared when I hear that. Not because they're small, because I was small. Like, small is where everyone starts. It's just that doing the right thing always plays itself out. There's a lot of agents in my market that are mad at me because they feel like I'm training the competition who are, who are in the same market, taking our market share, but I just have They don't understand the abundance of reality. It's, it's unlimited. So my question is, Cortez was in here earlier and uh, I gave him my story, you know, a roofed house, has got yep. real estate, made money, lost everything, went back to the roof and worked in oil rig, came back, number one Remax agent in Alabama. So, I told him the story, I told him my message, which was to line up who, who, who agents are with how they're communicating and the value relationships over transactions and my whole spiel. Got it. He said he's losing the connection between my story and my message. And my question is, how do I connect the two? Like well, first of all, and this, is, and this is not a dig at Cortez, this is a dig at me too. The number one that all, thing you all have to do is recognize these are very short engagements and you have to make sure if you agree with him. You know, like I'm worried to be at the vulnerability of Cortez's subjectiveness just because Cortez is wearing a Vayner jersey and sits here, like he may be wrong or may, he may be right. Do you think he's right? I think it that's a more- It made me think about it. Okay. I was like, where is it? And so here's what I would say. When I think about things, and it could be somebody who I've never <laughs> met before or something Dennis says, who I've known for a long time, I always make sure that I fully think it through before I act on it. So a lot of you are gonna get a lot of different thoughts and angles here and expansions on thoughts you've had, intuitive, or across the T that you needed or an I, or I, I, I'm desperately scared that my word would be gospel. I think what, why I win a lot and people that follow my stuff win is I keep shit basic as fuck, right? And then I'm very good at spending a lot of time in understanding the current state of attention and culture. Like everything, that, the reason you failed was because you did the wrong things. You did short term behavior, now you're feeling this insanity because you're on ultimate long term behavior. As far as the story connecting, that makes sense from a strategist standpoint. I just want to make sure it's true because you can lose a lot between strategy and execution. You can get the Cortez part really right and then the Babcock part really wrong. So like there's a lot of variables here so I don't want to dwell on anything too, too much. I think it's very easy to not lose your story. I think you just tell it over and over. Like you guys probably know this by consuming my content. You look at the, you know, I've started to finally not do this, right? But like, I don't know, only probably about a year ago, year and a half ago did I, two years ago did I stop not taking the first 20 minutes of my keynote to tell you I was born in Belarus and I gave a fuck about lemonade and, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, finally I was like, okay, maybe there's enough awareness that I, I'm not doing any value for the audience anymore and I just did. But you should be in heavy story. Like, if Cortez wants that and you want your full story, fucking tell it a lot more. Like, go back to the fucking oil rig. Like, like tell it. So to me, like, I, I, I would argue is this, what's the value of the story? What are the important parts of the story? I think, listen, 
I think there's no better story than what you have. I'll be very honest with you. I wish I had a loss of significance that I could point to. It makes me more, you know, you can associate more with, like it's hard, right? People are always like, what's your, you know, you guys probably think, that, like, I, I thought about today, I was like, fuck man, I wonder how many people think I'm secretly super depressed. This is literally what I thought today. Because if I was consuming me, I'd be like, no way. No fucking way you're this pumped every day. <laughs> you know? So I was like, you know what I mean? So like, I'm like, fuck man, I really wish I had a, bi-. you know, I've had losses like that too, but they were side projects. They weren't the, I've only run two businesses. You know? And when you run three, you've got side, they're not, you're running none. Right? Um, I don't know, but it's very easy to tell that story if you think oh, it's. Oh yeah, it's easy to tell. I'm just, the way he, yeah, again, this is where I have cynicism to my own employees because I don't want them to get too deep in the discipline and strip out the practicality. You know? Like, you know, and even even looking at Dennis and Mark Evans, you know, I don't, by the way, because Dennis had a, a nut business in Ukraine doesn't make me automatically say I like his point of view on this issue more than Mark who's grown up in the game. That That's not the point of it. But the point is you do have to keep that in mind. Like the reason I think VaynerMedia is gonna win in marketing is unlike all my clients, I've always marketed for the health and well-being of my family. <laughs> like, like my, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, it's you, right? Right, it was you, now it's, it feels different now that you're in that company, no matter what. You have it, and maybe that's exciting and what you need at this point and maybe you're gonna miss it being on the hook and you'll go through that, we'll all go through that. You know, I secretly am like, fuck man, I hope somebody doesn't come and offer me $5 billion for Vayner because I'm gonna have to take it because I wanna buy the Jets and then I'm gonna be an employee for three years, fuck me. You know, like, I don't know, like, you know, like, you know, you think about all these things, I wouldn't get too hung up. Cl- I would say you're getting hung up on the right thing. That's why you're feeling right, it. Right, right. But just keep fuck like fuck your origin story. Just keep bringing value. Right. I don't give a fuck about my origin story. It's an immigrant story. It's cool. There's a lot of fucking immigrants, right? And there's a hell of a lot of people that had it worse or different or what have you. I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's funny. One of my pieces of content went on World Stars Instagram account and like, like just reading all the comments of all these 15 year old kids who have no idea who I am and they're like. <laughs> He makes all this, like it's just funny. It's funny to know why I'm winning. I'm only, 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 only winning because I'm providing you guys more value than the alternatives. Through two core things. The mindset shit that I put out every day and then reminding you to keep watching me and copying me. I'm not gonna make a how-to video to post a fucking Snapchat story, but you've gotta ask yourself, why am I making so many animated GIF pieces of content on my Instagram stories? Why did I make up a swipe up piece of content and why am I continuing to, I promise you, if my swipe up animated GIF in my Instagram stories wasn't working, I wouldn't keep using it. I'm the easiest tell of all time. Everything I'm doing is either A, I'm trying to figure out if it's working, or B, it's working. Very simply, if you haven't seen it a whole lot, I'm trying to figure it out. If you see me keep doing it, it's fucking working. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, man. In addition, what OpenTable understood brilliantly in 2002 and three is they could buy that lead on Google for 50 cents. Game over. Understand? That's why I give, that's basically in a nutshell, the black and white reason why I do what I do. I do what I do because I give away the most value for free because that's the leverage point of the things that I do. This is the most dangerous, this is why I hate writing books. This is why, this is why I keep telling people, I day trade attention. It, I, I literally, like, I will never give better advice than to watch what I do. You go look at my last 70 fucking posts on Inter- Instagram right now, I don't have hashtags. But when I was doing it, that was the right thing to do. I'm being serious, I don't know what to say. Got it? That's why this game is so tough. This is why I changed it to day trading attention. It's day trading. I don't know how they, fu- you know, I don't know day trading super well and I don't know how people bought stocks back in the day, but here's what I know. It's faster now. Like, I don't know, my, literally my opinion on Snapchat could change tonight. But like access, and this is something to just think about, definitely for you, access is what people want. I'm giving away content for free for access. Music is free, the show isn't. Dinner with Kanye? I would give away a lot of free music 
to be able to get to a place in my life where I could have people pay $400,000 to have dinner with me. And guess what? In that picture I just painted you, both win. The thing you don't know is the amount of volume of content needed to really win. When you're done with the butts, you're ready. Thank you. Well, actually your question was actually my question on page 41 if you're asked Gary Vee I love it. So, which was, you know, if you don't want to go into stuff, you, uh, my question was, do you go into some full, full bore and say, do I have a plan B I can back up on? If you're thinking about the plan B already, are you setting yourself up for failure? And the answer you gave was pretty much the same thing, spot on. You gotta be sure, you know, you gotta be thinking about the background, but you, you definitely are going a little bit more full into what the jump is, but you don't wanna hinder yourself either. 100%, people think yeah. some things are just much more, it's not, you know, like, I, don't, I think it's practical to always know about B and C. Like this whole notion, there is no, like the rah-rah of an Instagram post of like, you don't have a plan A if you have a plan B or whatever the fuck it, that I see it. Like cool, but, like yes, I do think it's binary, go all in, but like for me it's like ambitious practicality. Right, I'm on full fucking offense with the capability of going to defense if shit gets fucked up. I get it. I would say this. Mm-hmm how good I'm doing for my client, for all of you, is subjective. And too many of us make that judgment for our client. Mm -hmm. Some of my happiest clients, I hate what we do for them. Some of my most unhappy clients, we do the best for them. From my point of view. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm a good point of view, but never make the judgment for the other person. Let the results speak. If everybody starts firing you, you were right. Right. My dad didn't even, you know how I got trained real well? My dad didn't even have a credit line. That's some good shit. Like that's some gangster shit. That's for real real. You having a good day? You just starting or fixing to be done? Yeah, just stop. So you do the night shift? Yes. Cool. You see some interesting characters. Yes. That's good. You like it, huh? I like it. <laughs> Like I'm a, I'm a speaker, a real estate speaker, author, coach, I and I just I just had a big meeting with, at VaynerMedia. I see. Are we traveling back? What's that? When you travel back? Tomorrow. Oh, what time? Uh, flights at nine. Nine in the morning? Or yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'll I'll have to get there about seven. So I'll leave my room about six. Yeah. Six or so.